We thank you, Miranda, and let's bring in uh, guests who join us from around the country to continue the discussion. Back with us from Newsmax, New York, Steve Malsberg, via telephone from Los Angeles, Michael Reagan, and from Newsmax, Washington, Bree Payton. Bree is a staff writer at The Federalist, and uh, Bree, it's uh, Ladies First. Your take on what has happened tonight in South Carolina. Sure. So Donald Trump right now is clearly slated to be um, the winner of this. And I think it's indicative that the Bush era is really coming to an end among the GOP, right? This is a state in which the Bushes are very well respected and very well liked. And this is a state where Jeb Bush was predicted to kind of have a comeback. So it's surprising to see that in this state, in which tr Trump has spent the past couple of weeks just trashing George W. Bush and the legacy of the Bush family, that he's able to come out and do so well. Uh, Dick Morris is here with me on the anchor desk. Dick, is it is it Bush fatigue or is something else going on here? Oh, I think it's a sharp reaction against the leadership and the establishment of the Republican Party. Uh, I think that when Justice Roberts voted to affirm Obamacare, he doomed uh, Jeb Bush's candidacy because here his brother was president. We got him elected and they appoint a judge who makes in the eyes of conservatives probably the worst court decision since uh, Plessy v. Ferguson that upheld segregation. Uh, it, it really, uh, really irked people. But I want to talk about something else. They asked voters in the exit poll, the CBS exit poll, when they left the polling place, what matters to you most? A candidate who can win in November, one who shares my values, one who tells it as it is, and one who can bring needed change. Now, when they asked tells it like it is, 16% said that was most important, and Trump won 77% of those voters, just absolutely dominated the field. Then when they said, who can win in November, Rubio got 49% of those voters, dominating the field again. Only 17% of those 19% voted for Trump, 19 for Cruz. Shares my values, Trump got only seven and uh, Cruz got 36 and Rubio 26. Can bring needed change in Washington. Trump did better, 43. Uh, Cruz, and Kasich, Cruz and Rubio more or less tied at 20. But it shows that Cruz's big thing is values and Trump's big thing is tells it like it is. And Rubio's big thing is can win in November. The electability argument, Michael Reagan uh, we saw, at least based on the exit polling that Dick just cited, that looking ahead in November seems to persuade people about Marco Rubio. Uh, is, is that reasonable criteria to look ahead to the finals and make your judgment that way on, quote, electability? Well, it is about electability. My daughter Ashley about this, who's 32 and a voter. It's about someone who is likable and relatable. And the fact is that Marco Rubio is both of those, and I think Marco Rubio would be very good if ultimately at the end he doesn't get the top spot, he might be very good for the second spot going into a November election. Why? Because Republicans need Florida. They also need Ohio. Uh, Steve, uh, let me get Steve in on this because that whole notion of electability and try as we might, we end up talking about vice presidential nominees. I think Michael makes a good point about Florida and its importance. But uh, just how how big does this electability argument loom in your mind, Steve? Well, I, I, you know, if if uh, if Trump uh, is not deemed the most electable yet, he's he's winning. I mean, I, I don't know if that people go into the voting booth at this point and say, well, let me see, who could best beat Hillary Clinton? I think at this point it's all about the candidates, and I think there's such a frenzy surrounding Trump that he's benefiting from, uh, from you know, being the one who speaks his mind. But I, I do think, I do agree with Michael, I, I, I think probably that Rubio is the most electable. I think Donald Trump is very electable, and I think that Ted Cruz is, is probably not electable. Uh, I would love to see a Trump-Rubio ticket. You do need a Hispanic on the ticket. Hillary will have a Hispanic on the ticket, probably in the person of uh, one of the Castro brothers, who I believe is now the, the HUD secretary. So uh, that's what they're going to be up against. And um, again, I, I hearken back to electability. There's no way that Hillary is going to be able to appeal to independents with her radical left-wing views, which she has reestablished and reaffirmed throughout this uh, primary season so far. I think, Steve, uh, it's very clear that uh, that Hillary uh, is is moving to the left 
in order to deal with Bernie Sanders. Uh, and I think that as you look at how the second place is going, normally in election nights, you know what's happening after a third is in. And we do. Trump is going to win. But is Cruz pulling away from Rubio? He might be looking at the numbers. He might not be. But if there's a four or five point gap eventually, or three or four point gap between Cruz and Rubio, then Cruz can argue that it's a two-way race. And that is so critically important to this. As to your point, Steve, about whether he can win or not, remember that the vast bulk of Trump's vote is very uneducated. If you wanted one thing to determine, tell how a voter is going to vote in advance, ask him his educational level. If he's been to college, he's probably not voting for Trump. If he's a high school grad or less, he probably is. And those voters are not going to sit and take into consideration who can win the election. They're voting on impulse for a guy who tells it like it is, and they really love that. And, of course, it does not invalidate what they're doing in terms of educational level. But to Bree Payton, when we take a look at this, regardless of educational level, it looks like the Trump supporters, uh, the Donald has made a real emotional connection with them. How do you think the, quote, electability argument and uh, looking ahead uh, will, will uh, shake out? Well, I think it's notable that nearly 65, uh, last time I checked, 65 percent of voters in South Carolina voted against Trump. Right. So I think that we have the GOP field has so many candidates in it right now that it's difficult to really tell if Trump is really that electable in the long run. Right. So I think if you see the kind of the lower tier candidates start to winnow down like Kasich um, and Jeb and the like, I think that I could see a lot of those votes going and switching to Margo Rubio. I don't really see a lot of those votes going to Cruz. Um, and I don't really see a lot of those votes going to Trump. So I think going forward that Rubio definitely is electable a lot more in the long run, I would say. But, I mean, as we know with Trump, anything could happen. <laughs> Steve Malzberg, you made the point earlier. I don't, I, 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 no. Go ahead, Steve. I just don't understand, really, with all due respect to anybody who has this opinion, that, you know, you, you take the 35 percent that voted for him and say the rest voted against him. There are six candidates I mean, if he had, what is he supposed to have, 60% and the others are supposed to share 40% among the other five? I mean, that would be unbelievable. I, I, the guy's winning comfortably every time out, except, of course, uh, the one time of the two or the three times out, I guess, in, 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 a, in a crowded field. He's doing what he needs to do. I, I just don't see adding yeah, up the yeah. rest of the people's votes and saying they voted against him and holding that you as know, a so negative. If I, could, if I could jump in. Uh, I Go was, ahead, Michael. I was talking to Newt, Ging, Newt Gingrich back the last time around, 2012. I'm talking to Newt. Newt gave that same argument. He said, you know, 60% of the Republicans aren't voting for Mitt Romney. And I looked at Newt and I said, that's right. But 80% are voting for you. And, 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 that, and so Malzberg's absolutely right on this. People keep on using that argument. And it's just a terrible, terrible argument. There is another portion well, of the Well, I think that, I think... Ahead, uh, so I think right now you are right that the GOP candidate is so wide and there are so many candidates. But I think really the distinction among conservatives who I've spoken with and among Republican voters is really the sharp divide is you're either for Trump or against Trump. Right. So I think people are voting for and I think that they are voting against him. I think a lot of the other candidates like the lower tier ones like Jeb and Kasich, I think that people who are voting for them are casting a vote against Donald Trump. So I think that that argument really makes sense just because the GOP field is so divided among Trump's and Bray, thanks. I'm going to ask you to suspend right here. We 